Hi everyone, Flaming Footy here and welcome or welcome back to the YouTube video on the channel and today guys I'm going to be doing an AFL 2023 pre-season preview going over both the unofficial and the official practice matches and what they're going to be meaning for the 2023 AFL season ahead as well as giving my predictions. Alright, so here we go. There was nothing better than this, which I could find for the preseason matches. Now, feel free to go ahead and watch my preseason predictions for the tipping as well. Um, but first, we've got Thursday. So, the unofficial match simulations kick off on Thursday, February 23rd, which is actually only 10 days away at the time that I'm that this video is going to be uploaded, 11 days at the time that I'm recording. But yeah, Thursday, February 23rd uh, at 4 p.m. Australian Eastern Daylight Time is Geelong and Hawthorne, four 20-minute quarters uh, plus time on. And that does represent a AFL game. I feel like the Cats will win this one pretty comfortably. I feel like this one is going to be a really bit of a good look to see where the Hawks are at, though. I feel like this is gonna they're going to be unleashing some fresh talent in this game, the Hawks. I feel like Hawthorne is a really big watched side with their younger talent, Geelong, they just need to win this game really massively to uh, put a good start to their year. Gold Coast versus Essendon. I feel like Essendon have to show signs of improvement in this one uh, against the Gold Coast Suns. And again, same for the Gold Coast Suns. I feel like they need to show improvement as well. Uh, the Gold Coast Suns are building off of what it was, what was a great 2022 AFL season. They need to carry that into this year. And I feel like if they can show some improvement in this one, that could be really useful. And the Bombers on the flip side, they had a poor 2022, uh, a really poor year, players, coach, everything like that. They've swapped co uh, coaches to Brad Scott, uh, hoping that he'll be able to help them out. And I feel like this game, I don't really know if they'll win or not. And it, I don't feel like the result really matters in this one. Obviously, the Bombers can claim the upset win. But I feel like... Yeah, this game's got to be about improvement for both of these two sides. It is six 25-minute quarters, so a longer game. Friday, February 24th, it's going to start off with North Melbourne versus Richmond and Arden Street Oval. Four 25-minute quarters and two 20-minute quarters, no time on. And North Melbourne are going to be unleashing some fresh blood. I feel like they're going to get absolutely smashed in this game by Richmond, who are a stronger and a better side, unleashing their two brand new um, pickups as well, Hopper and Taranto. I feel like Richmond, this needs to, this needs to be a game where they can put a big number on. And for North Melbourne, I feel like players like Wardlaw, Sheasel, uh, and then like players like um, Griffin Logue, Darcy Tucker, Jai Simpkin, Luke Davies, Uniac, just their whole team need to have a good game. Whether they get thumped or not, they just need to show that they're actually ready. And that could be a great sign of improvement if North Melbourne can compete. And if some of their big players and, and younger players can get uh, and can have some great games, that would really be a real heads up there for North Melbourne in showing signs of improvement. So good old rivals Carlton and Collingwood will be battling now at Icon Park for 25 minute quarters, no time on. And for Carlton, I feel like this game is about showing that they are a team that can play a top eight kind of brand of footy and Collingwood showing that they can maintain what they did last year really well, which was actually playing quite well. They only did hang on in the close games, which could be an issue if they were if they were reserve if they were reversed, Collingwood would have finished um yeah, towards the bottom of the ladder. But luckily enough for the Pies, they had them all go in their favour. And yeah, I feel like this game's going to be a really good game and could give us a rough little uh, estimate of ladder prediction as well. Sydney and Brisbane is another one where I feel like we're going to be getting a good look at ladder position. Two very good sides at Tramway Oval. Uh, 425 minute quarters, no time on. This is going to be a really important game for both these two sides. I feel like the better side will most certainly win. Both these sides have got lots of talent. I just really do feel like the winner in this game is going to be a lot to base off. So St Kilda and Melbourne RSEA Park, 6.25 minute quarter, so again, a longer game. And for St Kilda, they need to show improvement. They need to show competitiveness. They need to show um, they need to show that they are going to be a finals contender this year. They need to show a new brand of footy, an exciting, fast brand of footy. Last year's brand of footy that they played was horrible at times. Melbourne, we know they've been so good these past couple of years with their defence. They need to show their defence is still all in great, solid shape. Their whole midfield forward line is running. I feel like this game for Melbourne is representing a good forward line, and I feel like that could take them really far. So Fremantle and Adelaide is the next game. At Victor, George, Callis Oval. And there's 6.25 minute quarters in this game. Now, look, for Adelaide, they're going to be taking a young side over. They need to show improvement. They need to show they're contending again. 
It's going to be really big for their year. They can show that they can contend. We know they can contend, but they need to contend further than what they did last year. They need to push teams right to the end. Last year, the game against Gold Coast especially is a good point out that they just let the Suns kick five goals in like three minutes. They literally let them get away at the end there, did the Crows. If they had kicked a couple more goals, they actually could have won the game. So... Again, they need to show they're taking teams right to the end and not letting them get away with five minutes to go. And for the Dockers, they need to show that they are a top four classy side. So I feel like this game also does have a fair bit riding on it. It might not be a close game, but I feel like those little details are going to be quite important. So West Coast versus Port Adelaide is the last game. And for West Coast, it's showing that they've actually got a fast, exciting brand of footy. And for the Power, it is definitely showing that they do have the material to be back in finals action, top four, top eight. I feel like that game as well is going to be quite an important one at Mineral Resources Park for 28 minute quarters and two 20 minute quarters with no time on. So I'll run you through my early tips. I have Geelong over Hawthorne. I've got the Suns over the Bombers. I've got the Tigers over North Melbourne. I've got, I believe it's going to be Collingwood over Carlton. That's, I'm pretty sure I tipped them. Uh, I've got Brisbane over Sydney. I've got Melbourne over the Saints. I've got Frio over the Crows and Port Adelaide over West Coast. All right, so here we go. These are the official practice matches uh, starting off in March. There's a week by after these before the 2023 AFL season kicks off. The first game between the Hawks and oh, and before I start, actually, these are real AFL games as well. They represent a real AFL game, not with however many quarters or whatever you want to do made up. This is a four-quarter 20 minute plus time on game so it is a real AFL game and the Hawks and the Pies kicks it off at Utah Stadium and I feel like this game is going to be again quite important to see what the Pies have got and the Hawks the week before is going to be really important as well I feel like that Carlton Collingwood game is going to be really important and what the Hawks can do against the Cats again it's just what can the Hawks do against the Pies what are they going to put up we don't really know at Utah they are probably a chance to win but I wouldn't be tipping them. I still feel like the Pies will be able to get the job done. So the Dockers and the Power in WA. This is a massive game for both these sides. Port Adelaide, obviously, as we know, want to make the finals. Fremantle as well. I feel like for the Dockers, this game is, again, just replicating what they did against Adelaide the week prior. If they do what, they, if they do what I say they do, they should... Again, just really focus on what they did well last year and just try and put that into practice again. They need to show that their forward line as well, I feel like, something that I actually didn't touch on before. Their forward line is only, is the only thing that will cause them problems this year. If they've got a good forward line, their defence is really sharp and solid and so is their midfield. So if they can get that forward line right, I can't see why they couldn't be a top four, top two grand finalist winner. I couldn't see that. So I feel like Fremantle is just in these couple of weeks... It's the crows and the power, trying to find what forward what forward line works. Uh, and then for Port Adelaide, again, it's just unleashing some of these stars and this younger talent to see what sort of team they have to play with and then, yeah, really attack the finals. So Brisbane versus Geelong, I feel like the game to watch out of any preseason game is definitely going to be this one. This could potentially be the 2023 grand final right here at Brighton Homes Arena. And the Lions and the Cats, we, we know they've got probably the best sides in the competition. They are stacked all over the ground. Uh, both their off-season approaches were really good. Uh, Brisbane, they again attacked younger talent, but also getting an older, experienced player in Jack Gunston. The Cats, for them, it was just all-out younger talent and getting a top-10 draft pick in Jai Clark as well. Now, my tip for this game was the Lions. I feel like the Cats can have to be beaten throughout the year. I feel like the Lions can actually really have a good start to their year. But look, I reckon this game is going to be a really close one and a really good one. Must watch. So St Kilda versus Essendon at RSEA Park is the next one on Friday. And I feel like this one could be a pretty decent match. The Bombers, as I said, have got to show improvement. The Saints, so do they. And they, well, definitely the Saints need to show a fast-moving brand of footy, but so do the Bombers. I feel like this could actually be a really good clash. And I feel like the Saints will just have the better of the Bombers. So the Swans and the Blues is the next game at um, at an oval in Sydney. I don't really know what it is. I don't know the abbreviations for all these local ovals. But this is another really important game. And I feel like this one could be a good game. If Carlton played really well the week before against Collingwood, which I feel like they will, why can't they put that practice against Sydney and actually take the win? They could definitely do that. But I feel like the Swans, we know their side so well. Haven't made a lot of changes, which is definitely a promising uh, sign for the Swans that they are confident in their side. 
I don't think they'll have a big fall off this year. And I feel like they'll win this game, which will take some confidence into the 2023 AFL season. So then is the Eagles and the Crows. Now, again, just what they did last... Well, again, if if what um, I predicted actually happens. But they've again, they've both got to play some really uh, good brand of footy here. The Eagles... They need to play fast brand of footy. They've got to have a great team and they just cannot let the Crows get away. And the Crows, they can't let the Eagles get away either. And they've got to show competitiveness, fight and hunger, which they definitely do. And I feel like the Crows could actually get a pretty decent win here if they actually play really well, which I feel like they will. Their younger side is really good, really attacking, really hungry at the footy. So I feel like they should be able to win this game. So the Giants and the Suns is the next game. Uh, And look, I feel like this one is going to be a interesting game for both sides. The Giants opting out of a practice match as to the Western... Uh, no, was it the Dogs? I think it was the Dogs, actually, that, that opted out of a uh, unofficial practice match as well. But the Suns, I feel like, yeah, they've got to be hungry, they've got to go in hard, and they've got to find their best side. We do know there's definitely going to be limited options in that Suns side. They need to find their best side, and they need to have that ready for round one. The Giants, on the other hand... I feel like this is a this this is a great chance to mess and play with this side. See what options you've got. Be prepared to throw some magnets around and find a good attacking or good brand of footy which will work for them. And I feel like if they actually do do this in this game, they are all the chance for a round one win over the Crows. So I feel like that is really important. And this week for a lot of clubs is going to be a really big week. I feel like the Giants just got to find what works well for them. So then the next game is the Doggies and North Melbourne at Icon Park. And again, North Melbourne is just showing, having some really, some younger players, some talented younger players having some good games. And again, being prepared to just throw a couple of magnets around. Same with the Western Bulldogs. See what works well. We know they've got lots of tools all over the ground. Throw some of them into the defence line. See what works. Try and find your best combination for round one. I feel like the dogs absolutely have to do that as they want to be in the finals hunt this year. But my prediction for this game is the Western Bulldogs to go ahead and win. I feel like they'll be too strong. We do know that Bevo does like to throw the magnets around though, so I feel like he must do that in this game. So then the next game, the final game of the preseason matches before round one is a really exciting contest. Melbourne versus Richmond. Now, we know these two sides have incredibly great midfields. I feel like that's what makes these two sides. Uh, But we also know that Melbourne's defence line is really what led them to that premiership win in 2021. So, again, I feel like for the Demons, it's just getting that forward line right. I feel like that's the only part they're missing. I feel like they would have probably won the flag last year if they had have had a better forward line. A bit of inconsistency down there at times did lead them to some disappointing games. Uh, and then for the Tigers, I feel like it's just finding that perfect mix. We know their midfield is stacked. It is actually overstacked. There's probably too many players fighting for a spot. So it's just maybe moving a couple to half back, just seeing what works as well, but just really showing that they are a top four brand of footy players uh, and a side. So there we have it. Those are all the official practice matches done as well. I feel like there is a, a lot riding on these matches, including where you're going to play your players, are you going to throw the magnets around, having some breakout players, new brand of footy, whatever it be, I just feel like this is the perfect time to get your team and players ready for round one. So I feel like these two games uh, offer some flexibility and a little bit of, yeah, offer some flexibility and some time to actually practice against another AFL side before round one, which can make you go in feeling the best you possibly can. Uh, Even if it's after two losses, you can still uh, get positives out of there. For example, bright players or or, um, just what worked. I feel like that's what these weeks can really be about, is trying something new perhaps, seeing what works, or playing the way that you feel like could work in 2023. I feel like that's what these weeks are about. So these are going to be some really interesting games. And I reckon this could be a little sneak peek at what the uh, what the 2023 AFL season has to offer for us. So there we have it. There is the AFL 2023 preseason preview. There are some massive games in here which could definitely set us up for the 2023 AFL season. As I said, these can be experimental weeks. So thank you guys all so much for watching. Make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Hit that notification bell. 
Send you guys' name in another video on the channel. Thank you guys all for the smile for the subscribe run. Flaming for the out.